Hi, this is Tom and welcome to this week's Thrive in 5. This week takes off of last week where we talked about direct mail requirements and direct mail requirements were all about making sure they got it, making sure they opened it and then we talked a little bit about making sure it got read but today we're actually going to talk about how do we improve those response rates in reading it. I'm going to go through 10 different things to help increase your response rate, what I call response boosters. 10 great ones, I'm going to go through them quickly but each of them is important. These are things that have been tested by numerous direct mail companies companies, uh, direct response agencies, and they, these are tested in minute detail in order to, to figure out what actually works. And this is stuff that you can actually see in your own mailbox and actually compare against it. So let's go through them. The first is a headline. A headline is without question the most important thing to make sure you get a better response because it's the first thing that people read. When they opened your letter, the headline is what drives them to read the rest. Without a headline, they typically don't do that. The second is it has to be personalized. If you're sending to whom it may concern, your response rates are gonna drop exponentially. So make sure that you're personalizing it in the headline if possible, actually in the salutation, throughout the body of, of your actual letter, personalization increases response. Next is all about copy. And copy really has two components to it. The first is how you write the sentences. They actually need to be short and choppy the way most people speak. So that's the first thing. Talk and write like people speak because most people who read your direct mail actually read it in their head actually saying it. So you got to talk and you got to write in that kind of format. But also know that you've got to write long and by long I mean that there's this tendency to believe that we should write short stuff to people. Well if you're going to send a direct mail piece make sure that you put enough information that if they are interested you give them enough. This might be your only shot. So long copy traditionally and most cases outperform short copy when it relates to direct mail. Next is subheads. Subheads fill throughout your copy, fill throughout your direct mail piece as a what's called a double reader pass. So people don't actually read it verbatim right off the beginning. They actually open it, read your headline, read who it's to, and then they pop through it a lot of times through the subheads. And it's actually called a double reader path. And the reason it's called the double reader path because people actually read the headline, read the headline, read the headline, and then come to the bottom and then often read back up before they dig into it deeper if it actually makes sense to them. So subheads are critical. Next, pictures and graphics. Pictures and graphics help to articulate and help to sort of clarify what you're talking about or help to support it. Without pictures and graphics, you're actually doing yourself a disservice and it's been proven to actually support it. It's actually even really important to make sure under your pictures that you have an explanation of what that picture is. This is really important because it's the whole reason for being is your offer. An offer is what really the whole point is. You're, you're sending them a letter to get them to do something. So what is your offer? What are you trying to get them to do? And then it needs to be connected to a deadline. So an offer without a deadline is really not going to drive much response. So it's got to be a compelling offer and it has to be a solid deadline. Next, there has to be a call to action. It's not enough just to give an offer and a deadline. You actually give, have to give people how to respond. You have to give them the what next, what to do, where to do it, how to do it, who to call, what, what URL to go to online. There has to be a call to action that's clearly defined. Next, there actually has to be a PS and a PPS. What's really interesting is people actually uh, initially read the headline, they jump through the subheads, they get down to your signature and they actually read the PS and the PPS before they actually go back up and read it again. So that has to actually say something. Can be tied to your offer, can be tied to your call to action. Next, there needs to be inserts. Look at the mail you get and you'll discover that effective direct mail companies are actually putting a lot of stuff into your mail pieces. And finally, junk it up. Actually, what's really valuable when you watch really effective direct mail pieces is people will actually circle things. They'll put arrows. Uh, they'll underline things. That's called junking it up. And the more you junk it up, the more effective this becomes. If you're going to send direct mail, make sure you improve the response rate and boost the response rate by doing the right stuff. Ten great things. You got the knowledge. Now go do something great with it. 
We'll talk to you next time.